All right, guys, so today we've got the official release for 3D Sen, which is the three dimensional NES emulator made by Geode Studios. And in this video, I'm going to show you all of the features that are going to be included, as well as all of the games and everything else that you need as a proper guide to get you up and running. This is Steve from Nostalgia, and let's get started. All right, guys, so it's a pretty exciting day. A lot of people have had their eye on this emulator for quite a while, and we finally have a release from Geode Studios. You can, of course, grab this from Steam. I will leave links in the description down below. So what I want to do in this video, as I just said, is a full overview of all of the settings, and I'm also going to show you guys how to make things function and what each setting actually does, as well as the full roster of games that are going to be available and compatible with this current emulator. Now the very first thing that we're going to do is once we launch it for the very first time, you're going to be in your settings section. And as you can see, you've got a whole whack load of different options. The lighting section is going to make things brighter or dimmer, depending on what you prefer. And then of course, next to it, we have our volume dial. I'm not going to spend a ton of time talking about these because they are pretty self-explanatory. The next feature over here that we have is called BG Music, and that's background music. That's going to be background music that actually plays in the main menu. I have mine shut off. Whenever I do videos, I like to shut it off. But the emulator does have some royalty-free music that's playing in the background. If you want it, you can go ahead and choose to do that or not. The next feature over here is just another aesthetic feature. It's specifically adding shadowing layers. You can choose to have that on or off. It's really up to you. Uh, I'm just going to leave it as default on because it does actually look quite nice. Now, the next thing that we're going to get into is something called the skybox. And I did talk about this in previous videos, and this is going to more or less be the background of our games. So when we go ahead and click on it, you're going to see there's a few different options. There's a default option. There's an all black option. And as you can see, the background has now changed to a full black background. You can go to a gradient option. And what that's going to do is it's going to match the background to whatever is on screen in terms of the background. So if the background on a particular game is blue, that's what you're going to see. Now, the last one that I have on here is called Fantasy, and I actually like this one the best. And as you can see, it almost looks like it's kind of like a cloud type of appearance or like a water texture that you're kind of seeing there. What that's gonna do is it actually changes depending on the game, and it kind of looks at all the artwork and the color scheme of the game itself, and it kind of matches that, and you end up getting a really nice visual effect. So for the purposes of this, I am going to display it in fantasy, but feel free to fuss around with that and uh, figure out what you like best. Next, we've got our speed setting. This is just going to increase the speed of the game or decrease it. Not really much to say here. The next feature is called frame rate. So right now it's set to 90 FPS, and as you can see, you can drop down to 60 FPS, or you can go up to 120 FPS. Now, the higher FPS that you go, the smoother that you are going to experience this emulator. But you do need to keep in mind that the higher the FPS setting, the more taxing it is on your GPU and CPU. So you are going to need to make sure that your machine can handle it if you start going into the 120 FPS. If you set your FPS too high, you may see some on-screen stuttering, and then all you're gonna need to do is adjust the FPS down. The next setting over here is frame skip. And again, this is going to be tied into frame rate for the best performance. Leave frame skip on. As long as it's on, you're going to get the smoothest of visuals. But again, if your computer isn't powerful enough, you're going to want to turn that feature off. In terms of rendering, you're going to have either direct or you're going to have rendered textures. What I was told at this point is you should always try to run on direct rendering unless your computer can't do it, in which case then you're going to go to your next option. And the same is going to be true for anti-alias. You can leave that as off or you can go ahead and change the settings. Those are all going to be dependent on what your PC can handle. Personally, I leave my anti-alias to none and everything is running quite well. The next feature that we have over here is a full screen. Now, this full screen toggle is something that's just a convenience. You can set it here so that way, if you wanna open up in full screen, you can, but if you hit it, it'll automatically go down to Windows mode, as you can see now. And if I press it again, we're gonna jump back into full screen. Now, alternatively, if you press Alt and Enter on the keyboard, it's going to automatically toggle that as well. So we're just gonna go ahead and jump back, but just keep in mind, if you wanna to toggle, you can do it right from the settings section. Next, what we have over here is our button mapping. 
So depending on what you're actually using to control the emulator, you've got a few options here. You can either use your keyboard, which is pretty standard. Everything is gonna come pre-mapped. Or alternatively, if you go ahead and click on the keyboard option and go down to gamepad, you can actually select your X input. In my case, I'm using an Xbox One controller. If you've got a PS4 controller, PS3 controller, it doesn't matter. It'll all be listed right in here. You would just click on it and it's all going to come pre-mapped. That being said, you may not like the way that it is mapped, so you may want to reassign some of the buttons. Now, I found that out of the gate, my uh, left, right, up, and down was mapped to my analog, and I actually prefer to play Nintendo with a D-pad, so I had to remap it to my D-pad. Additionally, it's important to note that your menu option, in order to access your menu from the controller, you hit Start and Select, so you're going to want to make sure that your Start and Select are mapped properly, Additionally, there is also the ability to map a specific hotkey that will enter into the menu. And in this case, I've gone ahead and mapped my B button to do that. The other options over here are gonna be rotation left, rotation right, rotation up and down. That's gonna be how you pan the angle of the camera moving up and down, left and right, rotations, things like that. That's gonna be something that you're probably gonna to wanna to use your right analog stick for. I think that it actually works best so that way you can kind of adjust the camera angles with your right thumb. Underneath of that, we also have a zoom in and zoom out. And for those, I've used my L2 and R2 buttons. And that's just, again, a convenience thing. We don't have L and R buttons on a Nintendo game controller. So you can actually use whatever button combination that you feel most comfortable with. Below that we have our how-to instructions, so it tells us how to select a ROM, how to create game art. I'm going to go ahead and show you guys how to do that. There's also switching views, resetting cameras. If you do a long press on the menu, it'll reset the camera. And then you also have an option over here for quick save and quick load. So that's going to be creating a save state or loading from a save state. And that's actually pretty handy. What you need to do is either hold, select, and press the down on the D-pad for quick save or hold, select, and press up in order to quick load. And the last thing that's mentioned in here is Trigger Zapper, and that's gonna be for any of the games that are uh, light gun games similar to Duck Hunt. But that's pretty much it in terms of an overview for the specific settings. What we're gonna go ahead and do is jump over to the game section, and this is one of the big differences between the beta versions that I would have shown you in a previous video and the actual public release here that you can get right off of Steam, is that we have access to so many more games. Now I've got mine looking like it would for you if you had just downloaded it. I don't have any artwork, and I'm not really gonna show you too much of that. I'm not gonna load all of it up, but I am gonna show you guys some specific examples so you have a good idea of exactly what you need to do. So as I mentioned, you have access to a ton of games. That's going to include things like Batman. We've also got Castlevania here. We've got Contra, Donkey Kong 3. All of those games are going to be there, but there are also homebrew games like Flappy Bird, and we also have things like Micro Mages, which is a fantastic game. And I think that's going to be one of the ones that I showcase for this video. Now, what we actually need to do in order to assign a game to any of these blank spaces is we actually need to left click on the space and if this is your first time trying to load a specific title if you left click again it's going to automatically open up an option for you to identify where you actually have your game file and then you need to select it now i've already pre-navigated to my area as you can see i've got micro mages here all i need to do at this point is hit the open button and it's going to assign this game file to that location and going forward all you're going to need to do is double click on the game and it will auto launch so i'm going to go ahead and hit open now it's going to load the game up as you can see we are right into the actual game now and if i move with the right analog stick you can see that i can adjust the camera angles so i'm actually going to try to get into the menu here so we can see it a little bit better and i can adjust the camera angles with the right analog stick if i want to zoom out i can do that with my r2 button and then i can zoom in with my l2 button so we've got a lot of control in terms of our camera angles and everything's kind of fixed so you don't really have to worry about the camera ending up off screen or anything like that but let's say you end up in some awkward position where you're upside down and you don't really know how to get back to square all you need to do is long press on your menu button and as soon as you release it it'll automatically pan the camera back to where it should be to be level so that's actually really neat it's a good feature to have especially if you're really fussing around and you want to get back to this kind of level view right away just long press your menu and you're good to go 
The next thing that I'm going to talk about is creating that artwork that's going to go in that space. So what we want to do is actually press our menu button to get back to our menu. And as you can see, it creates kind of like a safe state almost on the far right hand side. All you need to do is go over to this and right click it. Once you right click it, you're going to see that that image has now been placed in the Micro Mages game slot and that's where it's going to stay. Now this emulator looks really, really nice when you kind of fill up all the artwork with all the different games. And uh, it's actually nice and simple to do. Once you go ahead and load that artwork, it's gonna stay there indefinitely unless you want to replace it. If you want to replace it, all you have to do is go back into the game. You're gonna go ahead and change your view or whatever. Let's say you find a different shot that you want as your uh, artwork. You're gonna go back out then you're going to go ahead and right click on that image and it will replace it. Now, obviously I don't want this as my main shot, but I did want to show you guys what that would look like. Other than that, there's not really a whole lot to say. I am definitely going to show you guys a little bit of gameplay here, just so you guys can uh, see how awesome the emulator is, especially if this is your first time seeing this. It's definitely a well worth investment. If you guys are interested in kind of playing a novelty version of some of the NES games, this may not be for everybody, but I can assure you it is a lot of fun. Now this emulator is going to retail for $9.99. And it is important to note that this emulator was developed by a single individual and he has put a lot of blood, sweat and tears into this. So I would definitely recommend supporting him if this is something that interests you. But I don't really have much else. Thank you guys so very much for watching. Let me know in the comment section down below if you guys have any questions. Let me know your thoughts about this emulator and if it's something that you would pick up. And if you're going to pick it up, and definitely give the developer a major shout out. But that's all I've got for you. Thanks again for watching, and I'll talk to you guys again real soon.